This is part 5 of the Beats D6 tournament. Check out the previous videos in this playlist if you missed it. Once again, we have another spicy challenge, so let us go over the details. So, in this challenge, you have to get the highest degree of Wizard Paragon on Cornfield round 40 to 85. Tiles will be broken by whoever removed the least corn, and then who spent the least cash. So, very cool. Basically, a farming challenge, which uh, you would have a lot of experience in if you had played bosses. And uh, you do have a good amount of experience playing bosses, so this is good. And just for reference, here's your bracket. We're currently in losers around four. Long way to go till the end still, so we'll enjoy it while we can. So the exact stats are here. First off, removal cost rate is 200% and uh, regal rate zero, just to prevent people from regal farming for pops, which is uh, smart to ban. Otherwise, it'd be pretty obvious, uh, you know, what the strategy will be. It's also nice that they fast track the early game for you, so uh, yeah. I'm gonna start by removing this 2k. And here's the setup I had in mind. So, in the recent update, 37.0, they buffed the Monkeyopolis to give a flat 2500, just for the base amount to, uh, I guess, make it better, because all those nerfs made it pretty bad. But the thing is, they accidentally, I think, made it too strong, because here's the deal. Right now, the most efficient Monkeyopolis is literally just placing a 000 farm, as you see right here, and then buying the Monkeyopolis straight up. And with that, that means that for the cost of 20k, this Monkeyopolis makes 2700 per round, and if you do the math on that, that's just very efficient relative to, well, all the other farming options in BTD6. So I think this will give us the best head start to make as much money as possible, because, yeah, basically we have to come up with at least 750k for the Wizard Paragon first, up, first and foremost. But don't forget, we also want to get a lot of extra money for Paragon Totems, which is what Geraldo's for, and also for, you know, other tiers... Other requirements for a high degree of Wizard Paragon. So 250k of other wizards. On top of, you know, the tier 5 itself. So we're looking at at least a million dollars we need to farm for in 40 rounds. Which will not be the hard part. The hardest part here will be trying to find the right balance of uh, Paragon Totems and farm. So we don't want to over farm because while well, there's no point going over a million dollars. Plus, you know, the money it's needed for the Paragons. So this might require like a second run. But I'm hoping to just... Uh, have this done in one run, ideally. So to get things started here, because we're over the Monkeyopolis, aka the Monkey Town, every pop gets 50% more from the natural balloon. So it's very important to go for a balloon trap to accelerate that even more. On top of rub to gold in the balloons. If I had to guess, that is probably the most efficient thing we can do at the moment. And once I get the fertilizer, I'll start, I'll start uh, getting up those uh, fertilizers on the BRFs too. I think for now, we want to go for, uh, I'd say at least three BRFs into... Uh, a banana central as soon as possible. But yeah, as if the uh, monkey office wasn't efficient enough, we have like all of that extra stuff to help us out. AK the discount, AK the extra cash from pops. It is just insane right now, and I fully expected to get nerfed again after NK realized their mistake in the monkey office. It also looks like we're going to be getting a third beer very, very early, so I think I, I think it's probably still worth it to build some central markets before going for the uh, banana central. Like maybe just one of them. I don't know if it's more efficient to just sell them. Like the BRFs to afford Central Early. Maybe we'll keep one of them. I don't know. But for sure I'm going to remove uh, one more corn here to extend the village range. It's unlikely that we'll tie in degree with our opponent. But it's definitely more likely than other poss possible rounds. So we do have to just keep on the lookout for that. Also this round here. I think I'll do in hand tense magic. Jungle drums. Uh, this rounds are kind of scary. On top of that. I'm going to see if it's worth it to do a couple models here. Just so that... The uh, um, mobs can pop this ram and then get into the balloon trap. Like, I could play really, really optimally and start doing trap micro, but I think I want to save myself the effort and just have these as a bit of a cheat code. So, I need, uh, I think, doing the math $50,000, also monkey sense. So, I think I can afford a banana central around 52. That's crazy. Yeah, oh my goodness. And this is going to be better farming than bosses because I don't have to sell defense, you know, for the thing. So, there it is, banana central. And I'll also now try to go for an overclock, of course. There it is. And fertilizer, right? We got for oh, we don't have fertilizer. 346. I probably should have you know what? I'll just get it now. I think I'll go ahead and turn auto start off. I probably should have done this earlier so that, you know. I probably would have squeezed out a little bit more money. Out of it, but that's fine. If that ends up being the difference between winning and losing, then just kill me, but I'm hoping I don't need to play like too precisely here. Save a little bit in terms of effort. So again, I did mention earlier, I need to find the right balance of when to go for a draw to level 20. And uh, how many farms I should have at that point I decide to, to, to want to go for a draw to level 20. And my guess would be, uh, at whatever point we make $28,000 per round. Because that's how much the Paragon Totems cost. You don't want to be uh, getting it too early that 
you can't afford to pay off the Paragon Totems because they basically refresh every single round. So, ideally, I guess 50k per round. I'll take a look this round, not buy anything. Just as you know, it's just to see. And yep, I think we're making pretty much 20, 28k per round. I think I want to squeeze in one more B-Raff though, just because there is still range here. And okay, we'll, we'll go for it now. We'll start power leveling Jivaldo to level 20. For that, we'll probably need about $150,000. I've also gone this long without even going over what it takes to get the high scree on the Paragon. So let me just go over it right now. So for starters, you want to get 16.2 million pops, but that's not possible in a challenge where there's no Rigo farming. I think the RBE from these rounds here is probably under a million, so I don't think I'm going to worry about, you know, getting pops on all the wizards too much, which is why I have everything but the D breath as non-wizards. So there it is. Yep, level 20 we can afford on round 61. So uh, maybe I got a little bit too early because when you refresh Geraldo or get level 20 in Geraldo, we actually get two Paragon Zones to drop. It's also only 26k, which is better for us. But yeah, I can only get one of them for this round. Yeah, other requirements, 250k on other wizards. But the thing is, I did the math, and I think spending the money on Paragon Totems is better than spending the 250k. Because you only get 10k power for maxing out the 250k. But the thing is, each Paragon Totem gives you 2,000 power. So, uh, again, doing the math, this is like twice as price efficient. And that's pretty much why I'm prioritizing going for the Paragon Totems first. So yeah, for 63 here, I'll also just do a Jerry Glue. I think that's, once again, the cheapest way to go about another... Uh, totem for this round. Again, I do want to focus on farming while getting Paragon Totems, so my next point of business is to go for Ultra Boost. And even remove uh, maybe one more space here to uh, get the uh, extra farms down, extra beer wrap. So there's an, uh, one more glue. So doing the math here, there's 21 rounds left, and we have currently four Paragon Totems. So I would end up having uh, 25 Paragon Totems for a total of 50k power. So uh, yeah, nothing shabby. As you can tell already, it's pretty much impossible to go for like, degree 100 in such a short round like this. It was almost looking like it was going to be a round 69 Ultra Boost, but nope, we got to wait one more round. Do you think we have enough money for a million dollars to farm a million dollars if we're... We only have 15 rounds left and I just got my Ultra Boost at uh, B Central? If not, again, simple optimization would just be to restart and buy this before going for Drew level 20. I feel like, yeah, that wouldn't give me, given me a huge income boost. Oh, and also one more thing I should be doing. Since I do need to get 10 stacks ASAP, uh, I should do a glue. Maybe I'll just do an 013 mob glue to slow down at Bluins because uh, I need to get like the stacks as quickly as possible to make the money. I think right now we can use uh, the Ultra Boost Maximum three times every round. And I only used it once last round because the rounds were very short. So that was kind of a rough play by me. By the way, because of some nerfs, uh, they did ban stuff like downdrafts, but I do think there are some things I could do to, well, stall even longer. This green balloon is uh, helping me out very much, by the way. Appreciate it a lot. Hmm, you know what I should do? I think at this point, um, I think there's a tower, if I can place it. The Beast Handler, if I could, like, pick up Serams with a Golden Eagle or something, or a Horned Owl, just to create, like, a, not infinite farm, but, like, a decent stall. I think that would help out a lot. Uh, I don't think there's any tower I could get rid of, though. Do you think I should just remove one more corn? I've done one, two, three plots. I'll do one more, okay? I know this is the best, uh, or the best real estate, but... I think I need stuff a little bit closer to the entrance. In fact, I can even do one more Nana farm. But yeah, let's do it. Uh, Horned Owl, and we'll set the reticle to, like, something over here. With a glue as well. A zero, zero, 002. See if that does anything for us. Currently get seven sacks over three rounds, and see what I'm doing here? I think that's a pretty decent stall, considering there's no other Bluins uh, in range here that are doing damage, other than the, um, well, <laughs> the Beast Nighter itself. But this is a good stall. Probably about as good as I can do without, like, an Ice Downdraft combo, since it's banned. I'm pretty much out of space now for, what do you call it, more farms. Uh, I think there's one more, though, for, I guess it would be, uh, wait. Am I going to beat 76 Wave here, or do I just Maelstrom? Nope, I think I survived just fine. Again, no rigor rate means actually the rounds are a little bit easier, so uh, that's uh, very nice for us. I feel like at this point, I should try to squeeze in some space for, like, uh, wizards to get popped. So I'll start with an arcane spike. Hopefully this doesn't break the stall that the beast hander is doing. I'll put it a little bit outside of range to compensate. Also, 10 stacks, so I think now we should start ultra boosting other things, possibly. Uh, I'll get another off clock with this missing space over here. Feeling extra careful about my banana central because one overclock stack does, or one overclock does not give it full uptime, so I'll just do uh, two instead. And also this round, I think I just tank all those balloons, right? Yep. Oh my god. 
I forgot there's no retry last round of this challenge. Um, so I just lost all my progress. This really freaking blows. Uh, let me just do some quick math before I make a new run, just to see if, like, if I was on pace to afford, well, you know, the Wizard Paragon. I think the total sell value of everything except for the Paragon Totems is about, um, 450,000, so I just need to make, uh, what do you call it, 300 to 400k more in seven rounds? Um, I'm actually not sure. Maybe it's not the worst thing that I lost this run, because I actually don't think I would have afforded the Wizard Paragon, so I'll do the same thing, but with Ultra Boost before going for a Jerry 20. I can also use this time to optimize a wee bit more, so what I should have done earlier on top of the Rubber Gold Clust trap combo was also glue, so even more balloons get Rubber Golded. A small difference, but I might as well use it while I uh, have the run completely reset, you know? Okay, round 51 update. So I think at this point in the game, like, I was gonna afford the Fertilize at the same time as the uh, Banana Central, but I can actually sell for it now. So I do think I'm actually around ahead of pace, thanks to that, you know, that extra glue to slow down for... Uh, the rubber to gold, so this is looking good. I probably should have even, uh, hang on. If I had, like, a spear count potion, I probably should have done that too for the, um, alchemist, but I don't have one right now. And let's just see if I sell it. One, two, three. Oh, I can afford it. And let's see. Only 2k. I think this is worth it, yeah. Spend 2 2 k because I'm gonna get Geraldo high anyways. To go for the, um, yeah. Banana Central Fertilizer strategy. Oh, yeah. One underrated aspect of the glue, too, is that it makes it slow enough that Less balloons go past while the balloon drops on cooldown, which I guess is just another reason why we're doing so much better farm wise. And because of that, I think I'm actually going to uh, change my plan again. I think instead of going for the Ultra Boost, I think it's too expensive. I'll just do one more beer after. I think I can still afford the Paragon, the level 20 Geraldo, on the same round, ideally. 61, that is. And have enough excess cash thanks to the extra beer raft that I can probably make up that 400k in seven rounds uh, a little bit faster. We'll see where we're at again at that point, but. I think that's the strategy I want to go for. Uh, never mind. I guess this run we're one round behind. I can only get the totem on 62. That's whatever. As long as we can afford the Paragon, once again, I will be satisfied with this run and whatever degree I end up getting. Take a look at this, guys. I can actually get the Ultra Boost on 65 instead of 70 last time. Five rounds earlier than before. So again, I don't think it'll be a question of whether I can afford it or not, because uh, this is looking so much better than last time. And now, once again, we shall begin the Beast Hunter stall, so 002, and put the Horned Owl over here. Also, one more thing, since space is a problem, I completely forgot that you can put Paragon Totems in places where you can't know if it towers, so I don't need to waste space up here. Again, I'm hoping that I can, if it is, does come to a tiebreaker, then I will have the upper hand with, you know, only three removed. But yeah, in the time that I got the Ultra Boost last run, I already have 10 stacks on the Banana Central, so again... I think we are all but guaranteed a victory here if I don't uh, do something stupid. In fact, since money is an issue, I might as well just go ahead and get Archmage right now. Hell, maybe the extra pops I'll get from these last 12 rounds here, compared to the last run, will allow me to basically go for extra power via pops on the wizard. I don't really, yeah, we don't really care about the road to gold plus Loon Trap income anymore. And again, back where we left off, minus one Paragon Totem in exchange for $300,000. I will take it. Okay, so last round, just to make sure I got the submission uh, properly, I'm allowed to get the Paragon if I press free play. So not this round, but because again, I have enough money, I think I'm okay with just selling it now and just uh, building all the building box needed to get the max Paragon. So goodbye, everything. It's quite funny too that I actually barely have enough money for this. 1.07 million. So I need to get down to, again, with 250k of other towers. Uh, uh, that is $821,000 of T400 below, so give me a second to uh, spam Arcane Spikes. Okay, and there we have it. So we want one more Paragon Totem, so let me just play the round. Break down the two ZMGs here. GG's, GG's. So there's the uh, menu screen uh, next. Press free play. Make sure. And I think I'm allowed to do one more Paragon Totem. Yeah, that should be allowed. So one more. And let's see what degree uh, the uh, Magus Perfectus ends up being. Uh, do it. And... 62. Again, for not really having the requirement for pops, I will take it. That's pretty solid. Very cool stuff. And once again, this is only possible because of that Miniopolis buff. And now, once again, skipping over to the end of round 5. Starting off, here are the results of the highest score in the round. First place goes to EE with degree 73. And I'm not surprised about the strategy they used to get the highest degree. Instead of the Miniopolis, the best strategy is actually to go for snipers and just max stall every round. 
Stall it so hard that you get the maximum abilities every round, which is three, which is something I had in mind, but honestly, I really didn't want to spend 10 years on this challenge, maximum stalling every round, because each round will take about five minutes off fast forward if you try to stall for all three sniper abilities. And since this is technically not a ranked boss, you can take as long as you want. Probably could have done another round with this strategy if I had time, but yeah, I think I would have lost my patience. <laughs> Anyways, here are the scores of uh, every player this round that submitted out of possible C4 and going from ascending order. And as you can see, going up to 12th and 11th place, we have tied with Chalkbox for a degree of 62. So not a bad ranking. Unfortunately, our opponent got 65. So yep, that's it for the tournament. We tied for the highest score that lost. Honestly, looking back, it's kind of funny how unlucky we got. Considering in round two, I pretty much had to get a top three placement to advance. And in this round two, it was pretty much top five for bus, and you generally don't expect the 183rd seed to, well, post a score that high, because I was looking back at uh, this unofficial tournament stat sheet that uh, one of the players organized, sorted by average rank of all the winners' rounds, and as you can see, I'm in 13th place. Fairly consistent scores, meanwhile, my opponent for this round uh, pretty much posted average scores the entire uh, tournament, up until uh, this round, so you can uh, understand how... Uh, I would have thought that the Gree 62 would have been enough. But unfortunately, it wasn't. GG to my opponents. Yeah, kind of already saw that flaw before the tournament started. Where it kind of doesn't make sense to do a 1v1 style in a tournament where you can't influence the other opponent's scores. Because uh, that just kind of leaves it down to a lot of bracket luck. And I do think I got a little bit of the short end of the stick, but that's whatever. I think it would have been better if top X scores advanced that way. All the people who make it to the end, like, you know consistently placed well enough to advance. Again, this may not be the end of all tournament videos, because if there's an interesting round, I think I'll still give it a shot and show you how my score ends up comparing to all the other players in that round. Anyways, once again, if you missed any of the previous episodes, I have a playlist curated. But yeah, that's it. See you next time.